Then on Raw, I want to start a tournament for the number one contendership for the title. Since, you know, nobody has a rematch clause left. Which is like, oh my god, thank you. Now we can finally start somewhere fresh. And, uh... And the new number one contender would get the title shot the Monday Night Raw after Survivor Series. So that's something to look forward to, right? It's like a reason to t tune in. Um, I would have the, uh, the number one contendership tournament, like that whole main event. Not the main event. The whole the end result of that would happen at Survivor Series. Um, and the first match that I would book for this would be John Morrison versus some kind of jobber, like maybe a JTG or somebody, like Trent Barretta, I don't even care, just somebody. And I'd obviously have Morrison go over so that it looks like they maybe want to do something with him because he is a face, and you definitely need more faces in the title scene. So there you go. Um, I'd cut back to a promo backstage but not really a promo like I just have a camera follow and see him punk around while he's on the phone and then eventually I'd have him start laughing and he'd say something like all right I'll see you next week old friend and then like that would tease that somebody like from his team he's already got lined up then uh and then I'd want to do a match where the internet champion Cody Rhodes goes against the U.S. champion Jack Swagger in like a non-title match just to just to be on the show and then they would go back and forth for a little while. And uh, and then I'd have Ziggler come out. And he would cost Swagger the match. Somehow. I don't I don't care how. But then Vicky would be really pissed. And uh, that would obviously create more heat between Ziggler and Swagger. And I think that the crowd would start getting behind that match. And that title in general. Um... I'd want Awesome Truth to meet up with Air Boom backstage and tell them that if they want another title shot, it's going to be on their on their terms. They're going to have to earn it. And, uh, you know, tonight if they accept it, they're going to have to go against some other hungry team. And then i just bring out like a McGillicuddy and an Otunga, just another tag team that's been around. I think it's the only other tag team that's been around. And they'd have a, they'd have a tag match there on Raw. Um, showcase some cool tag team moves. I mean, there's nothing wrong with hyping up the division. Obviously, Air Boom would win. And uh, then I'd end the show with uh, Triple, Ouch, yeah, Triple H coming out and uh, kind of like speaking his mind about the state of the company or something. And then I would have... Uh, I'd have that stable with Cena and, you know, Awesome Truth and Nash come out and just, just wreck him. You know, just beat him up in the middle of the ring. No help. And I'd have Cena stand tall over him with the title, just to, you know, to reiterate the fact that, one, Cena's a bad guy now. Two, Cena's little group has control over the company right now. And three, that they don't like Triple H, and they have no, you know, like, reason to like him. Um, on the SmackDown after that, I would have Teddy Long introduce Mark Henry as the champion. And then I'd, I'd give him enough time to actually make a damn point with his promo before I cut him off, you know? And then um, I had a big show come out and tell him that he got lucky. And Mark Henry would laugh and he'd say, that, you know, luck's got nothing to do with it. And then Big Show would say that he had a feeling if they fought again that he'd just narc Mark, Mark Henry right out. And uh, Henry would tell him that, you know, I ain't got nothing to prove. and Nobody's going to take this title away from me. And then I just have Big Show knock him the hell out. And that would create, you know, like a rematch. So that's one way to set it up. Um, Great Kali would be throwing things around, looking for Jinder Mahal backstage. Um, I'd have an interview with DiBiase about, you know, losing at vengeance to Cody Rhodes. And talk about how long he's known Cody for and that he's a great wrestler and... I'd have him say something like, you know, the next opportunity that, you know, I would ever get would, would go a lot different. But then I'd cut the camera away to some other superstars, kind of shaking their head and laughing. And that is who I would put Cody Rhodes up against next. Like, I don't have, like, anybody particular in mind after the whole DiBiase thing. Because, I mean, he's beat him a couple of times already. It's just stale. And I don't think Ted is ready to carry that Intercontinental title. And I don't want to see it off of Rhodes at this point anyway, because he's really doing a great job with it. He needs to build some more meaningful feuds. Um, and then I would end the show. Like, Kali finally finds Jinder Mahal, 
and uh, Jinder Mahal, Kali, and Kali's sister, you know, would all kind of be standing there, and Kali's sister would kind of call him a freak and an embarrassment to the family, and she'd want Kali to apologize for angering Mahal, and then Mahal would obviously steal, like, the microphone and start cutting him up in Hindi or, you know, Punjabi or I don't know what the language is they speak, but you get the point. And uh, I'd have Kali try to, like, reason with his sister a little bit, you know? And he'd say something like, Jinder is bad man. You know, like, like in Tarzan speak. Like, they totally don't allow him to speak full English, so it would have to be like, broken up like that. I think that'd be funny. Uh, at which point, Kali's sister would slap him, and uh, Mahal would take the microphone and just lay out Kali, and that would keep that feud going. Um, the next Raw, I would have Rey Mysterio versus ADR, Alberto Del Rio. In the, in the tournament to determine the number one contender. And uh, at this point, like, I really don't give a shit who wins. But I'm an ADR fan more than I am a Mysterio fan. So I would say, you know, just go ahead and, and, and get him over and let him do it. Um, Punk would start to assemble his team. You know, a couple of the baby faces backstage would probably try to offer out to help him. But, you know, he'd decline and he'd be like, I got it under control. And, you know... He'd go out to the ring to tell the world the good news, and when uh, when Punk tried to make his promo, he'd get interrupted by Cena in that, you know, stable, and they'd start to swarm her outside the ring, you know? And at that point, I'd have Triple H's music hit, and he'd come out, you know, and he'd be like, with a microphone, and he'd say, whoever throws the first punch is going to be fired, and there won't be any interaction between Punk and the, and the CWO until Survivor Series, and that, um... I'd have, you know, all them guys look at each other and then look at Triple H and then they'd enter the ring and then one of them would grab the microphone from Triple H and they'd make a match for that night and it'd be Cena and Nash against Punk and Triple H and the stipulation would be if Cena and Nash win that there is no match for Survivor Series and Triple H would say that, you know, that sounds like a great plan except for one thing. There's nothing in it for Punk and Triple H. And then Cena would take the microphone back and he'd say, if you win tonight, we won't leave you laying in a pile. And that would, you know, reinforce that they're just out there looking for a fight, looking to beat somebody up. They don't care about, you know, order. They don't care about authority. Um, and then later backstage, I would have Punk and Triple H kind of stare each other down, you know. And one would ask the other if he can be trusted. And I'd have him get nose to nose, right, just in each other's face. And then I'd have them back off each other and just kind of grin and Punk would be like, well, let's do this, you know, like to tease that they're both kind of like faces now in the company and that it, like it finally, all this schmaz, you know, at Night of Champions and everything is starting to like make sense. Like I'm trying to, to sort this out into a storyline where Punk and Triple H aren't at each other's throat anymore. Um, so then... Cena and Nash versus Punk and Triple H, and I'd have it go on for about six minutes or so. You know, enough time to establish that, yes, everybody got in the ring, everybody tagged out of the ring, everybody's been hitting on each other in the ring. And then i have Awesome Truth come down with some chairs, and they pull the ref out. And then I'd have them start to beat the crap right out of Triple H and Punk again until some new music that we'd never heard before hits. And then I'd have Colt Cabana run out with a couple of baseball bats and uh, he'd help the good guys clear the ring and uh, Punk would give him a big hug and they'd all start yelling at each other and Punk would start yelling at Cena and I'd have the show just end in a stare down where Cena's got the title and Punk is in there just pointing at him and whatever, you know, and like basically, you know, now that I've taken up a million hours of your time is that the whole premise of this booking goes like this to lead up to Survivor Series and Right before Survivor Series, I would have The Rock come back via satellite, and he would say that he's throwing in with Team Punk, so that it's going to be Cena, Nash, and Awesome Truth, those four, against Punk, Colt Cabana, Triple H, and The Rock at Survivor Series. Um, because you already know that they're going to use The Rock, so I figured I might as well try to use The Rock here in something that would make sense, because Rock is a face, so I'd put him on the face team. And that at least allows for him... Not even to have to turn on Cena at this point because Cena's already a heel. So they just get in there and maybe they touch, you know, once or twice, but that's not going to determine how the match goes because there's a whole bunch of other people in it. 
Um, I'd have Swagger and Dolph Ziggler battle for the U.S. title again. Mark Henry and Big Show for the heavyweight championship again. Um, I'd have Cody Rhodes in a different feud by then, not with DiBiase anymore, because, like, I mean, how many times does he have to beat him before they give that up? Um, I'd have Sheamus and Christian settle their feud once and for all at Survivor Series. I'd want Sheamus to obviously go over again. And uh, I'd have the finals to the number one contender for that tournament I mentioned about the WWE Championship conclude at Survivor Series. And I'd pretty much give it to John Morrison at this point for the sake of changing up the faces in the title scene. And uh, obviously, like, you know, seen as the heel. So you want to reinforce that you're putting him against a good guy. Um, and I think that John Morrison is at that point where he really needs to have a title shot to be taken seriously again. Not that I really like him at all, but he's like the biggest face other than Punk right now. So that's where we are. Um, and at this point, my creativity is tapped the fuck out. So please let me what you you know let me let me know what you think. And uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you later.